I'm just hanging out. Hey, we're live. It says we're live. Hey, good morning. 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. Hope you're doing well. And I got Betty here. Betty, say hi to everyone. What's your Betty? Oh, look at that wrinkled face. And we got a Bubbles over here, too. Bubbles, you want to say hi? Here's her tail. There's her tail. They're actually getting to be good friends. And this is Betty's new, uh, uh, what's we call it, blanket? A little baby Yoda. She's got a baby Yoda blanket to keep her warm because it's getting cold out there. And right now she's staring at the fortune cookie. It's fortune cookie Friday. Hey, fortune cookie Friday. You can't eat the fortune cookie, Ben. Um, and today I want to talk about adaptive agile mindset. And a lot of people think agile is there to adapt to the organization. And that's not true. Um, they think they can, they like safe notoriously goes that way. Well, we're going to adapt Agile to fit how the organization currently exists. But we're not really going to talk about changing organization, but more the mindset and how the adaptive Agile mindset is different mindset than previous way people worked. And I'm going to talk about that today. Right, Ben? And then we're going to do Fortune Cookie Friday where the Agile accountants help us out. So, I am Greg Master, Scrum Master, and Agile Coach. This is the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. This is our 774th episode, and we talk about Agile and Scrum in a practical and tactical way so you can bring value to your customer, not work crazy hours, get home to family and friends, have a little fun, enjoy your fur babies or your baby babies or family or friends, and just have some fun. Have fun at work, too, because work would kind of go crazy, and that's that, that's that corporate adaptive thing. So... I'm going to talk about today. So yesterday, or a couple of days, actually, it's been a few days. It's interesting talking to people who don't have an agile adaptive mindset or adaptive agile mindset where they want to get perfection like before they put anything out for anybody to see. But that's not the mindset. The mindset is, Get it as good as you think you got it or get it out there. Get feedback. Get that rapid feedback and then adjust. I'll give you a couple examples that happened the other day. One, we were trying to figure out this plan for rolling out a new presentation and all that. and This classroom and the teachings and everything. And I'm like, well, it's not necessarily going to be final. I'm, we're going to put this together. We're going to train some people. Take a feedback loop adjust the training and then put it out again and keep doing that until we get there. Is it going to be ever final? I don't know. It all depends because what's in my mind and what's in other people's mind because they've been doing it every day is different from somebody who's never done it before. Right. And you're going to, what you may assume, you know, that other people know that they was, Oh, this makes perfect logical sense. And anybody should be able to do it. When you really do it and train and teach somebody can be a whole different story. And that's the adaptive agile mindset where you're getting those rapid feedback loops. You're okay with not being perfect. It's okay to get feedback. You don't want to wait six months to try to develop perfection and every nuance and all. You're better off getting it to the customer, getting some value out of that activity and getting some feedback and adjusting from there. That's the adaptive agile mindset. And again, it's not let's adapt agile to conform to whatever version of the organization as we have set it up that way. And again, that's like one of the the, the downfalls of safe. One of the crutches where like, oh, well, we can put these managers in this spot and we can put these people in this spot and these people in this spot and we don't have to change anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first one was the mindset. Things change. Get it out there into the customer's hands. Find feedback loops. What works doesn't work. Don't try to come up with perfection and take forever to get it out. You don't want to do that. And then the other thing, I was trying to do some how to fit OKRs and a, and a, and a customer's JIRA system and or their, their, their tracking system and what it would look like and how to do it. And until I really started jotting it down and actually putting it down and creating it with a version of it, a sample, didn't really know what would work. Some things worked, some things didn't. Some things I found I like to do it differently. But until I actually did it, 
I can type it on a PowerPoint slide all I want, but until you actually try to physically do it, you don't know whether or not that idea works. So there again, yes, you can lay it out. It should do this. It should look like that. It should have this. And this is a connector. But until you actually do it, we'll tell you a different story, right? And then as you do it, you go, okay, yeah, I don't want to do that. That's extra work. Let's eliminate that work. So now I'm adapting what my original mindset was to what do I really corely need to get it to the customer? What do we, what's the core value that we're getting out of this effort and what's eliminate all that. And that's the lean part, right? Let's eliminate all these extra questions, right? And extra things. And what is that? We just eliminate that. Um, it's a very interesting thing. And maybe I should do a, a, uh, a system, but it was, I was doing whiteboards and the system and laying it out and, and what I had visually, how I would vision these executives let, do this activity. I'm like, okay, we got to do this and that. And just kind of laid it out and practiced it. And then I made adaptions and adapted what I thought was there. I said, yeah, that doesn't work. And until you actually do it with someone, some people don't understand it. Like it takes a couple of times to get these OKRs working. It takes a couple of times for the, the crew to figure this out. Your best bet is to do it. Find out what works. That yeah, that didn't work. Let's try a different experiment or a different way of doing it the next time. And you want to get so many options, especially OKRs, which are like yearly and quarterly. You want to wait three months to try it again. So you just if you miss that window, you got to wait three months to try it again. And they like, oh, we can't. No, just do it. It may not work the best way, but you'll get that feedback loop and you'll get better at what the organization can handle. And that's what people miss. So that's the adaptive agile mindset is the ability to say it's OK to fail. It's OK to get something as good as you can get it. Don't have all the answers, but you won't have the answers until you give in front of the customers. Customers, you, you're going to get a rapid feedback loop to readjust. And then so that is and then another one was what's do it all and then do the documentation. And this is where the definition done is. But when I work, I, when I create the training, I also create the documentation at the same time because I'm copying and pasting what I'm doing as I do it. Or I run the session, I get feedback, I grab that, what needs clarification from a documentation. And I only create that documentation that helps the student or the people that are learning this thing to get the job done. So I, it's, it's, it's you, in order to be done and be complete, I do that too. So that's like the definition number where someone, I'll just write code. Well, as you write the code, document it. As you test it, I try to get my testers. When you run the test sequence, do screen captures and put that in the documentation, right? As you're doing it, take those same screen captures you use for the testing, make them as part of the documentation. This is what you should see here. When you do this, this is what you should see. And just take that and also make it part of the documentation because you already did it. So why not? So that's the adaptive agile mindset. All right. So with that, I think it's fortune cookie Friday time. Look at she's like, Ooh, fortune cookie Friday. I got a cookie. You got a fortune cookie. Woody woody. All right. So fortune cookie Friday. This is where we open a fortune cookie. Well, a pat. We have a message that was sent to us by agile accountants. They sealed it in a plastic wrap and sealed it inside a cookie. And help. What are you doing? Is she trying to eat the cookie? Is she trying to eat the cookie? Am I teasing you too much? So we're going to open it up. We're going to read the cookie and see what applies to. Look at her. Jeez, Betty. You really love these cookies, don't you? I got to put this over my head. So I'm opening up the sealed cookie box. I'm putting it over here, away from the dog. I would like to take a picture of the cookie. And this is the message. Ah, I like this one. And this goes really well with what the topic was. It's amazing how these Agile, these Agile accountants have this, this nailed down. Keep your courage up and it will keep you up. Keep your courage up and it'll keep you up. And that goes to the adaptive Agile mentality. Keep your courage up that it's okay to fail. Get stuff out there. You have to have, um, uh, it's true. You have to have a little bit of courage to be willing to say it's close enough. 
I need feedback because I'm not going to think of every nuance of what's going on until I do it. I won't know. I did the same thing with the 5 a.m. Master Scrum website. I posted it up there, get as, you know, enough so it had pieces of it. And then I went on the phone. And apparently there's a little thing when you read it on the phone, a little icon shows up. I'm like, where the heck is this icon? From? But I would never have known that icon would show up until I actually put it on the street. So you have to keep your courage up and it'll keep you up. So that's the idea. You're like, hey, I got it out. Great. I passed that wall. You'll you're you you'll be pumped up. And when you get that feedback, you'll pump, you'll make it a change and you'll adjust it because you feel that satisfaction of getting it out there. So with that, Betty gets a piece of cookie. There. There you go. So because she gets a piece of cookie because apparently she loves these fortune cookies. And with that, I want to say I wish you all the best. Happy day. Happy scrumming. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, and enjoy some time with family and friends. And with that, happy scrumming. See you later. And enjoy. See you tomorrow.